Normally I'd say, hey guys, if you haven't seen Shut-In yet, don't see it, you know, don't watch the spoiler review until after you've seen it. Not today. The only enjoyment I believe that you will get out of this fucking movie is to have somebody tell you how stupid the fucking twist is so that you can laugh at it. The twist is literally, literally, the first part of Dumb and Dumber 2, where Harry has been pretending all this time, since the events of the first movie, to be paralyzed and to be unable to speak. And then he pops out and he's like, GOTCHA! So, Naomi Watts sends her troubled kid, uh, Charlie Heaton from Stranger Things, who looks just like fucking Edward Furlong. She sends him to a school for troubled youth or whatever. And along the way, him and his dad get in an argument, he fights him, and uh, he sends the car into a semi-truck, killing the dad. And then the next scene, we see Naomi Watts, who's an amazing actress. I like her a lot, especially in horror movies, taking care of this kid, who supposedly can't walk, talk at all. Uh, and she has to feed him and literally do every single thing for him. And it's it's worn her down. She says at one point in the movie, you know, it's not even my son anymore. And she says where he can hear that she's going to be sending him away for somebody to take care of her. Because she just can't do everything. Along the way, Jacob Tremblay's character comes in. And he's this this little, supposed to be this little omen boy who just gives dark looks. And uh, it broke a kid's arm at school. And you're led to believe he's some troubled youth. And she wants to take care of him. They do a fucking bullshit raccoon in the trash jump scare because they have nothing else to fill the time with because up until the twist comes out this is a non-movie fucking completely the director was so like i just watched arrival and they were so good at holding all the stuff the film had to divulge in uh this movie is the complete opposite of that it's such lazily directed the director was just like i just gotta film shit for an hour until i show them the twist wait till the fucking twist we're supposed to believe i guess i don't even know for sure i guess we're supposed to believe that this kid shows up and then she gets on the phone and the kid runs away again we're supposed to believe that he's maybe died in this winter storm and is haunting her because there's the scene that's in the trailer where he puts his hand over her mouth while she's sleeping you could seriously sense that the studio forced that in because they wanted a horror-esque moment and I'm not even sure, the movie's not even sure, what it is we're supposed to be scared of. They just say, oh, we'll make it seem like she's having creepy dreams, and there may or not be a kid in the house, and the, uh, the kid who's paralyzed has scratches on her face. I think they wanted us to be scared of this kid. Which, they did a fucking terrible job of it, if that's what the fuck they were going for. But then the twist is even fucking worse. So, I... <laughs> Did I say worst? <laughs> she's talking to Oliver Platt, who's, I like Oliver Platt, he's decent. Um, he needs blood work to send her this medication and he gets the blood work and he's like fuck you lady you've been taking all sorts of crazy shit no wonder you're taking your son's pills and she's like no i fucking have it hang on real quick i'll be right back and then i, I couldn't even believe it when i saw it and at first i thought maybe that'll be something cool but then five seconds of thought i was like it's total horseshit that could never happen her son has been faking paralyzed this entire time he sees him through a Skype call, get up out of his chair and walk across the fucking screen. And it's like, are you fucking kidding me? The next thing she wakes up in a bathtub, naked, because this kid's fucking weird. It's like, that's your mom, dude. And he's caring for her like she cared for him, singing her the Mockingbird song, which was a sad attempt at creepiness. And uh, it is way overly sexual towards her. And he's like, I guess his whole thing is... You know, uh, I killed that guy that you've thought about dating, and I, ki I killed dad, and, and I killed that, that, that fucking kid, or I want to kill that kid, because you're trying to replace me and send me away again. I've been faking paralyzed this whole time because I liked it when you wiped my ass. It's so fucking stupid. And admittedly, I didn't see it coming because no one would think that a movie would be that dumb. I mean, the, for years, for fucking years, the kid didn't actually laugh at a fart. Or something like he didn't break character once for three years like not one fucking moment did something happen where he's like ah shit <gasps> I'm not paralyzed you got me and then when he comes to he's just overacting like a motherfucker he's trying to be creepy and scary and he comes off like he wants to bang his stepmom he's like putting his finger inside of her mouth and shit and like creepily touching her at one point when he has her up against the stove I'm waiting for him to try to pull her pants down he seriously seems like he wants to bang his mom and it's really uncomfortable and it's uncomfortable in the wrong way. Not like, oh, this is creeping me out. What a weird horror movie. Anything could happen. But like, a, I don't feel like he should want to bang his mom. I don't think that's what we're going for here at all. But then, 
we go to this terrible slasher territory and it's just awful. He's like rolling the hammer on the walls and trying to be creepy and spouting off the worst written lines I've ever heard in my life. Like, it was supposed to be you and me! The whole movie felt awful. It looks like shit. It looks like a lifetime TV drama. I've seen video on demand movies that are 10,000 times more creative and put, had more effort in them than this movie did. I, Naomi Watts is good. Oliver Platt's good. I give it a 4 out of 10 just for them and I'm being really nice. This is a non-fucking movie. It's a non-movie. That the, the whole movie, all they were waiting to do was give you the twist that they thought was so clever, and it's shite. It's pure shit on a stick in Boston in the street in the gutter in the backyard of a fucking creepy homeless guy. Why does he have a backyard if he's homeless? That doesn't make any sense, Mike. I don't know. None of this fucking movie. The police would have shown up a hundred times by now. They tried to make you believe that the police weren't coming out because they were too busy with the storm. But literally, if someone calls and say, hey, someone's being drugged, there may be someone in our house trying to kill her right now, the like, and Oliver Platt can reach there, they didn't even give him, like, a truck to drive to make it believable. He's driving, like, a fucking Taurus, and he can make it in through this bad storm. They totally failed to add any atmosphere from the storm going on outside whatsoever. Comment down below, what's the worst twist you've ever seen in a movie? I love your fucking faces! I got a feeling we're going to get a lot of villager. I have a feeling we're going to get a lot of uh, The Village in here, but comment down below, let me know. I love your fucking faces. If you're new to the channel, click that subscribe button and get some whammo.